Hi, folks, and welcome to another episode of The Superintendent's View. I am Matt Carey, the Superintendent of Schools here at Mercer County Technical Schools. I'm really excited about this episode. We have a lot of neat things to show you. Uh, we'll be doing an interview with Desmond Haynes, who is the uh, owner of GeoGreens, and, and Desmond will be telling you all about you know, what, what they do at GeoGreens and his partnership here with Mercer County Technical Schools. Uh, I'll also be taking you to the auto tech program uh, to take a, to meet Mr. Park, our instructor, and Gavin, one of the students from the program uh, that really did a great job. I actually had my car in there to uh, have some work done on it, and we'll show you around our uh, awesome auto tech program. And then to close out the show, uh, we did a, an amazing project in our horticulture department uh, where we did a pavers project. Uh, so we time-lapsed the video of it so you can see it from beginning to end, and we'll show you the amazing product that's coming out of their program as well. Uh, before we go on location to, uh, or, or start the interviews and go on location, uh, just a couple highlights from the district. Uh, we're currently in the middle of our strategic planning. Uh, our working groups have already met a couple times and are doing the strengths and weaknesses and, and uh, challenges of our district. Uh, we're looking at our vision statement um, and how we want to move forward over the next five years as a school district. Also, you know, People look at our school and they say, well, we, you know, they don't have any sports there, or competition, but we do. We have a lot of competition here. We just have different competition. Uh, currently now, our pro start teams are, are currently competing. We're seeing great results coming in. We have state and national competitions coming up. We have our Skills USA students uh, that are engaged in competition right now. We have a whole trophy rack full of Skills USA uh, awards. Our HOSA students are getting ready to go on their competition uh, down to Washington, D.C. on a two-day trip. Uh, and then new this year, we have our esports team, uh, the Wizards, uh, and they are getting ready to uh, take part in the Garden State Esports uh, State Tournament. Uh, we are currently the 16th seed going in. I think there's 32 teams total in the in the competition. Uh, so we're really excited about that, and we're going to root the Wizards on. Um, another highlight that we're currently going through right now is our admissions. Uh, all, we have our program of studies approved, and Mr. Orff, our director of CTE, is currently out. Uh, you know, going around to different schools and talking about our programs and getting ready for the 2023-24 uh, school year. So if you have interest in our programs, visit our website, give Mr. Worf a call and check out Mercer County Technical Schools because magic happens here. And to close out the intro to the show, uh, we have the prom coming up. We're really excited about that. This year's prom will be held on April 6th at 6 p.m. at the Mercer Oaks Golf Course. Uh, if you have interest in uh, the prom and you want some more information, please visit our website to check out our upcoming prom. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Thank you. Hi, folks. In this segment of the show, I'll be meeting with Desmond Hayes. He is the owner of GeoGreens. Um, I'm going to let him tell you all about what GeoGreens is. Uh, but welcome to the show, Desmond. Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate being here. Yeah, we love having you. And, uh, you know, I had the pleasure of visiting your establishment a couple months ago. Um, you know, we originally connected through email mm -hmm. yep. um, and then started having some discussions. Um, but why don't you tell the folks out there a little bit about what GeoGreens is and, you know, a little bit about your, your company? So, yeah, so GeoGreens, we, we opened up the location in Hamilton last November. Uh, it's an indoor hydroponics vertical farm. And the goal and the mission is to provide uh, healthier, nutrient-rich produce to uh, food deserts and food insecure areas uh, throughout the state, throughout the tri-state as we continue to grow. Uh, and just keep that mission aligned and keep going and keep growing literally and figuratively, the company and produce as we keep going. Um, so, you know, I got into this, been growing for about eight years or so now, uh, and got into it because as a, a health guy and definitely an environmental guy. And I you know, just kept researching and trying to figure out, you know, just how can I you know, attack both of those industries, both of those areas, and make a huge impact in both of those areas. And, you know, just start testing, researching with different renewable energies and, you know, uh, recycled water and all these other things and ran across hydroponics, uh, started growing uh, houses in shambles as I was growing, figured everything out. Unfortunately, a lot of plants died in the process, but through that trial and error, I was able to you know, obviously get better with it, conquer what I was trying to accomplish and ultimately just continue to pursue what I wanted to do. And COVID was obviously or actually the kind of the tipping point for me because mm -hmm. I've realized, okay, Tom was working for somebody else 
and realized like a lot, of, a lot of people, we were all stuck at home. Right. And, you know, you see all everything going on with the health reasons, you know, the impact of COVID. And in addition to that, again, I'm stuck at home. I'm, I'm realizing I'm working a lot more on my company and Geo Greens than, you know, who I was working for at the time. And, you know, started seeing a little more traction throughout that time period, too. And kind of just decided, like, if, if I'm not going to do this, I'm never going to do it. Right. So took the leap. And at the time I was over in uh, near, uh, near uh, Ashbury Park and decided to start to look around the state, the, the best possible areas in terms, again, with uh, food deserts and some of the, um, you know, um, uh, minority communities that were underserved the most. Mm-hmm. And ran into Hamilton, found a warehouse, you know, fit the space out. Did everything I needed to do, and uh, now we're where we're at right now, and it's, it's it's going it's going pretty good for us right yeah, now. Yeah, it's such a neat setup, and you talked about how they're set up, uh, you know, vertically, and mm-hmm. um, but it's really just the out. You know, I'll talk about a little bit just my perspective of when I got there. You know, we're talking about the the older warehouses. Yeah, you know, yeah. they're on the border of Trenton and Hamilton. A lot of yeah. them are still abandoned, and yeah. you know, and not being refurbished. This is really part of the revitalization. Yeah. you know, of the Greater Trenton area. Uh, and you're a big part of that. Um, you know, you talked about food desert. Um, you know, that might be a term that you know some people aren't familiar with out there. Can you talk a little bit about you know what mm-hmm. a food desert is, and, and you know how how it, this is impacting, like you said, some of our minority or lower income mm-hmm. uh, families that live in Mercer County? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, food deserts. You're going or you're going to hear, and a lot of people are going to hear it more often than not uh, than they have been hearing about over the last two, three years or so. Uh, so just recently, there's an agency called NJEDA, and they actually designated 50 food deserts throughout the state of New Jersey. Now, I, obviously, you can think of and look in other areas in the state and know there's more. But these are the ones from their research that have been dramatically hit a lot worse than others. Uh, and it, it essentially deals with the access to healthier food in terms of uh, the traveling radius and how far or how often the people within those areas can actually, you know, get to a supermarket or get to a, a store that is known for their, their produce versus a uh, corner store or a bodega right. or some of those other smaller stores that aren't traditionally known for having quality food and healthy foods to them or nutritional foods to them. It also comes down to, you know, the, the income of the households as well. Obviously, if you got a lower income or middle sized income family and again, you know, the, a healthier place, a uh, healthier supermarket is way outside the range of their you know, driving radius or where they want to, then obviously it's a conversation of, okay, access. I don't want to travel 40 miles, half hour to go here when I can just go down the street and get something that is not of the best quality. So you, you hear the, the term food deserts, food swamps, they're throwing around food apartheid area zones too. So yeah, it really comes down to the access to you know, quality foods and whatnot. And me being in several of them as I've grown up, um, I see that same uh, that same chain effect. Whereas most of the youth love to go to fast food or love to go to corner stores. But again, not known for their traditional uh, healthier foods. So they'll go there versus going or traveling somewhere else or in our case, somewhere that's inside of a uh, um, food desert. But if they don't know about it, then that's when they'll go to the ladder and just go to right. fast food or whatnot. Right. So, so basically what the concept is, is is you're you're taking the uh, have of having to go to the farm or to go to a place and you're bringing that to that area by mm-hmm. having, you know, the hydroponics grown vegetables and and leaves and greens, you know, right grown right there in in that community. Right, right, yeah. And I mean, it's it's and after once we got settled in, then it was a, just a matter of you know word of mouth traveling and just letting people know, hey, you know, we're here, we're located here. You don't have to travel, you know, oh so far. You know, we'll essentially grow the order so that right after we harvest, we'll just deliver it to, or you can come pick it up. So you're getting the healthiest type of, uh, of produce that you possibly can, you know, even cleaner than, I don't like to say better, but even cleaner than organic. Cause mm-hmm. again, organic still has pesticides for people that aren't familiar with that, that, that notion. Uh, but in our facility, because we grow everything indoors, we don't 
have pests, so we don't have to spray pesticides. Therefore, it's cleaner than anything else. Oh, absolutely. It and was clean. Yeah. 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 In yep. fact, if you remember, I had to dawn up. I had to wear yep. a, a, a whole suit. whole PPE, PPE suit on, and yep. hair nets and everything, because we want to make sure we keep that out. Because that is, you know, the, the bread and butter to what we're doing. The, the fact that it's so clean and it, we harvest it and nothing sits in the facility more than two or three days. Absolutely. So it's going right out. Yeah. So it's moving quickly, too. I mean, mm -hmm. I know your business is, has been growing exponentially. You know, really since the day you started it, you're getting a lot of recognition, you know, whether yeah, it be in yeah. newspapers or some of the local we just, organizations. We just got an award last Friday from the SBDC 2022 Success Award. I think I'm getting that right from last year. And, you know, it's, it's, it's great. I wouldn't, couldn't ask for anything more. Now, it's, again, it's, we still got a lot of work to be done. So we, it's it's humbling, but we don't want to let that go to Absolutely. our head or anything like that. And just just to keep going with the mission, really. Well, I think this could be a model, you know, when you talk about, you know, 50 food deserts in just mm -hmm. the state of New Jersey, just, yep. you know, take that and times it by 50 states. Mm. Um, you know, this could be the wave of the future when you're addressing uh, food inequities and food shortages, um, especially in our more urban communities. Yeah, a a absolutely. I mean, it, my plan for Geo Greens was always to have multiple locations because, you know, what, what some of these other, uh, you know, farmers or producers do, they mass produce and, you know, nothing against that. It's just once you mass produce after a certain while, the quality of the produce starts to you know, decrease. But if you have a few of these different types of you know, local farms like us, like Geo Greens, positioned correctly with the, the correct relationships and, you know, the town behind them and the districts behind them and so forth, then you really start to see that transition of more quality foods getting into these communities, getting into these environments that need it the most. You know, not every single place uh, is known for uh, being able to, again, access these areas. But if, again, if you put them in the right areas, then you start to see some of that that outcome. You start to see some of those results that we ultimately all want to have for everybody Absolutely. here. Yeah, so that's that's, that's that's the plan. So obviously we we've developed our relationship and uh, you've become a, a partner of our district, which mm -hmm. is, is wonderful. And I know you were at the partnership luncheon um, just last Great week. Great time. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing food. Well, <laughs> amazing right? food. Yeah. yeah. Amazing food. Yeah. Right. And then in our meetings that we've had, um, you know, we've kind of shown you that we've dabbled a little bit in hydroponics, mm -hmm. you know, in our culinary uh, academy. Um, but we also have a horticulture uh, you know, program here as well that yep. you're, you're taking a look at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some things? Obviously, there's lots of planning and things that have to go into uh, you know starting uh, new pieces of a program. But what mm -hmm. are some things that you've done already with us um, or some things that you think in the future we can continue with our partnership? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, right now, I think we're we're right on the cusp of finalizing the, the design of where we actually want to implement or, you know, position uh, a, a, a smaller farm version at the school, at the district right now. Um, and I think from there, we can really start to transition and get some students really involved and, and really start to engage into it. And, you know, the field, you know, it's still in its quote unquote infancy stage to some degree. Um, I do have to reprogram a lot of people because once they hear hydroponics, they hear uh, indoor growing, they immediately think the world that is becoming legalized right now. Right. And, and there's uh, just so much more to it than that. Yes. Yeah. And I have to tell everybody, listen, you know, the hydroponics started way back in the Greek times and it started with produce, not the world that everybody's starting to really tailor to right now right. or really related to right now. Yeah. And that's a stigma that does come with hydroponics. Yeah. In fact, yeah. you know, one of the first conversations as we were kind of getting to know each other was, mm -hmm. was exactly that. And I, I kind of explained, you know, without tiptoeing around it, that, you know, we're a school district and that's not going to be anything that we're ever going to be interested exactly. in, yeah. you know, in steering our kids too. If, if, you know, as adults, if they, if they go into that field, with the, to do that. you right. know, with the knowledge that they get working in, in, you know, our farming hydroponics, mm -hmm. then that's, that's their decision. But you know, what we're really looking at is, you know, the term urban farming, yeah. uh, hydroponics, um, utilizing indoor spaces to grow, yeah. Um, yeah. which is really just an amazing thing. And, and you're right. It's been around for you know, for forever. Long, we're around for a long time. And and now the fact that obviously we, we got a lot more tech around us, the world and society is where it's at right now. You can expand the world of indoor growing and urban farming so much more than, again, what it's being legalized on right now. You know, you can, they're using drones in certain farms. Uh, you can start to really in, you know, scientifically look into like the taste and the crunchiness and the softness of leaves. 
you can kind of manipulate them in a certain way so that now you're fitting your pattern. Right. You can grow certain seeds so that they're much more healthier than your traditional seed grown somewhere else. Not GMOs, but a, a, and there's a company I'm working with in Florida that works with seeds and they use algorithms. It's unbelievable. And I did tests on these seeds and basic seeds and their seeds and their, their percentages came out so much healthier. I don't know what they did. I'm not yeah. really going to touch on it, but it is it's so many things you can do in this world. And I know, you know, once I get some some students around it and they start to see it and start to really, um, you know, really start becoming ingratiated inside of it and the day to day and they start asking themselves, OK, you know, maybe they do like to look at certain lights. OK, why is this light having this effect on a plant, but not over here? Or why is this happening and why not over here? And then you start to see kind of the smirk, smoke burning a little right. bit. Like the interns I had last summer, they didn't want to leave. But I, I had to tell them, you got to get <laughs> you go back to school. I'm not going anywhere. And once the, your schedule clears up a little bit, come back or reach back out to me and we'll make it work. But you could start to see that they had no experience with indoor growing or right. hydroponics by the end of the summer. They were asking so many questions and were getting excited when I would just give them little tasks that they could take responsibility for and see the progress that was happening afterwards. So I see that as something that we could definitely really see the benefit and the advantages incorporated in here in the district, too. So I'm looking Absolutely. forward to it. I mean, between it. our different programs, our science, technology, engineering, mathematics, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that, you know, everybody could have a part in this. Yeah. Um, and we're just really happy to be doing it with, a, a, you know, a Mercer County uh, based company with yourself. Um, mm -hmm. You've been such a great partner with us so far. And, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to the future of our partnership together. Yeah, and me, me too. Look, looking forward to it. Extremely excited. Again, great luncheon last week. Uh, even greater uh, uh, meeting last week with all the, um, the rest of the faculty members. And it's been great talking to, you know, everybody at this point in time and, you know, collaborating and kind of exchange some ideas. And I think that the future is just going to continue to grow with the geo grains, <laughs> the district and everything else in between. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you being on the show today. And thanks for uh, sharing all of your knowledge with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. You got it, Desmond. Take care. You too. Hi, folks. I'm on location at the uh, Auto Technology Program here at uh, the SIPEC Center. I'm with Mr. Park, our instructor. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. I know I've uh, brought a couple of my cars in uh, since I started here. Yes, and sir. actually right behind us, we have uh, the car up on the lift. Absolutely. Yeah, good stuff. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, you know, what, what the students do in this, in this program? So students in this program will do everything from maintenance to a vehicle. All the way up to, we have done engines and transmissions. Wow. Um, and anything in between. Um, it really depends on the students. Right. Um, right now we're doing an oil change on your car, and he's also doing a vehicle inspection. Great. To see if it needs anything else that you might not know about. Absolutely. Um, I got other students doing all kinds of different jobs right now, between electrical to mechanical. Great. And um, you know, this is a program for 11th and 12th graders, so it's a shared time program. Yes, sir. So how do we go about um, you know, finding students that are interested in the program? What is, you know, what, is, what is the criteria that we're looking for? So right now, if you're interested in the program and your grades are above average and your attendance is really good, mm -hmm. um, then you can come down and see me. We do a little exploratory. I put you through some paces to see how interested you are. Okay. And if all goes well, then there's an application that Mr. Orff can have a conversation with and the home schools can apply. Great, yeah, Mr. Orff is our uh, director of admissions for the yes, district sir. and uh, you know, handles all that, so great, great information. Um, what are the levels of students that you have come into the program? Or do you have novices all the way up to students who yes. are like on the expert level? Uh, I wouldn't say expert level, but they definitely have some knowledge or some background, mm -hmm. mainly because uh, the, their father or uncle or relative is in the business. Right. Um, but we have kids that started here that know absolutely nothing, which is just fine. Right, right. So. And students in here will either keep it in their back pocket for them to know to fix their own car. Sure. Um, they want to go on as a career. I have a lot of kids that go out in the industry and stay in the industry. Right. Yeah, I know we have a lot of graduates that are currently Tons. working in the Mercer County area. Mm -hmm. We well, have a lot of kids that do co-op programs. Co-op. So mm -hmm. they'll come to us for the first year, and then hopefully by the second year, um, we try to get them out in co-op. So instead of coming to me, they'll go directly to a, a job site. And what are some of the job sites that they're working on? Is it like car dealerships? and? Yep, so and we have uh, four dealerships, Honda, Toyota, all main manufacturers. We also have mom and pop shops, mm -hmm. uh, little gas stations. Wow. 
Uh, and then we have um, retail, so sure. like AutoZone, Pet Boys, that kind okay, of thing. Okay, neat. Too. Yeah, I didn't even think of those. Yeah. yeah. All right, so obviously the shop is full. We have cars everywhere. Yes. So yeah. where, obviously mine's up there, but where do these cars come from? You know, so, how, how do we do our, our business here, so to speak? Good question. So we have a wide variety. We have a handful of cars that belong to the school that we can practice on, which mm -hmm. is good. And then we have customer cars that either belong to outside people, outside the school district. They basically contact me and then I set that up accordingly. Or we have people that work on campus and they bring their cars over. Right. And you pretty much have a steady stream of cars coming in throughout the school year. In fact, oh, I, yes. I know sometimes I have to give you a week or so notice before yes. I, I can come in. Yes, we do an average of around 160 to 180 cars during school year. Wow, wow, so almost averaging a car a day. Yep. Wow, that's great. Well, I really want to thank you for being on uh, the show today and uh, for you know showing us what your shop uh, is all about. Uh, nice. You do amazing work here. I, I hear great <laughs> things about it and I experience we'll it firsthand. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for all your work with our students, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, great. All right, we're back, and I'm here with Gavin uh, from our auto technology program. Welcome to the show, Gavin. Thank you. Yeah, you've been doing the work on my car, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, that's good. So what, uh, yeah, first of all, what district do you come from? I come from Allentown High School. I live in Millstone, but I go to Allentown High School for now. Okay, and you're an 11th grader? Yes, sir. So uh, what made you interested in coming to Mercer County Technical Schools? Well, my father is actually a mechanic, ah. so he owns his own forklift company. So okay. I pretty much got started from that, and then my school told me about this, uh -huh. and I was like, Huh, it's a good opportunity. Absolutely. Might as well try it, figure it out, and then keep it in my back pocket. So if my car breaks down on the road, something right. like that, then I can fix it. Absolutely. But so you're. Much. So are you interested in going to this as a field? As it, yeah, so, I know you're in eleventh grade. Yeah. I mean, uh, I yeah. still haven't made up my mind what I want to do for a living. <laughs> but is this something you want to pursue, or are uh, you just right now because it's just a, a level of interest? It's pretty much just a level of interest for now. But when I turn eighteen, I can start working for my dad. Right. So I'm gonna start doing that, and then I'll have this in my back pocket just in case that doesn't work out. I Absolutely. can go to a dealership, or I could start my own company, something like that. Great. Um, if I were to bring in a prospective student, so think about like you last year as you were um, you know, deciding whether you were going to yeah. come here or not. What are some things that you would tell them about this program? I would tell them that it's a great program. I have a lot of fun. It's a lot much better than sitting in a classroom and just messing around. Sure. I get work done. I'm okay. constantly moving around. I'm never messing around doing anything like that because right. I love what I'm doing. Absolutely. And if you're interested in it, then you should come here. 100%. That's awesome. That's great advice. Definitely. Well, thanks for working on my car. No problem. And thanks for being on the show today. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks, Gavin. No problem. To close out our show today, we'll be taking you to the Horticulture and Turf Management Program uh, to take a look at a project they're currently working on, which is pavers. Uh, they did amazing work, so we time-lapsed this video so you could see the project from the beginning stages all the way through the final product. Enjoy. Enjoy.